Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gooding, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and the Homerton Fertility Center. So today I'm going to talk to you about a slightly different topic, mainly connected to miscarriages. Now, the question has been asked for, let's say the last 50 or 60 years, does progesterone lower the risk of having a threatened miscarriage? Or when there's a threatened miscarriage, does addition of progesterone improve the chance of a live birth? So what we'll do is we will uh, plan to have a discussion on the effect of, of progesterone in threatened miscarriage. The question which we have to ask here is, is this age old theory of addition of progesterone, is that going to be beneficial for our patients? Now, this was a large systematic review done, which was a recent publication. And what is it based on? 20% of miscarriages experience what we call as threatened miscarriage, which means vaginal bleeding with or without pain in the first half of pregnancy. Half of those who will have some bleeding will miscarry. Now, low progesterone levels may predict first trimester miscarriage. And women presenting in early pregnancy, bleeding or with pain, low progesterone does indicate the chance of a less viable pregnancy. Now, there have been many studies done for women with threatened miscarriage. So progesterone for women with threatened miscarriage has shown inconsistent results. Previous reviews have suggested that progesterone may load the risk of a threatened miscarriage. They were poorly powered in their statistical calculation. And a large study in 2019 concluded that women in the first trimester of pregnancy who are bleeding, there was no difference if you gave them progesterone. So let's have a look at how this study was constructed. And the objective was to investigate whether the use of progesterone is associated with improved live birth rates and other benefits in women with threatened miscarriage. A systematic review consisting of randomized controlled trials, comparing progesterone with placebo or no treatment in women with threatened miscarriage. 10 trials of a total of 5,056 patients. So what were the results? The use of progesterone increased live birth rates, and that was moderate quality evidence. Benefits were seen with oral progesterone and not with vaginal progesterone. Again, a moderate quality of evidence. Risk of miscarriage was reduced with progesterone. And the benefits seen with oral progesterone was again, low quality evidence. So how does it compare with other studies? Previous studies did not assess live birth rates. Lee found out that progesterone therapy can effectively reduce miscarriage rates. Cochrane review probably said that progesterone probably is effective in reducing the risk of miscarriage. This review was slightly different. It looked at live birth rate as a criteria, updated meta-analysis, they were added an extra 4,000 cases, showed a difference between oral and vaginal progesterone. So when you compare oral and vaginal progesterone, almost all the previous studies were underpowered. One RCT showed the miscarriage rates were slightly lower in women with oral progesterone and higher, slightly higher with those with vaginal progesterone. Other studies showed very much the same benefit. So in fact, there was not much clarity in whether you use oral or vaginal progesterone. There are some differences with, it, with the way you give it. And I think that oral progesterone tends to have more oral side effects. 
and vaginal progesterone causes irritation and discharge. And in fact, there is evidence that sexual intercourse while you're on vaginal progesterone may reduce if its efficacy. So if you have a look at this study, it, and it has strengths of having a strict methodology, our limitations are that the differences across all baseline, number of miscarriages, differences in outcome, differences in treatment, dose and duration, small number of trials, and what you need is a larger number of trials to run the systematic analysis. It would require a longer follow-up for uh, congenital abnormalities. And in fact, the subgroup which looked at oral and vaginal progesterone needs to be expanded. It was much more smaller and of lower quality. So at the end, what do you take away from this systemic meta-analysis? And is there something which you need to have a, a, a review about? The question is, this meta-analysis does say that progesterone should be considered in women with threatened miscarriage. The use of oral progesterone reduced miscarriage rates and increased live birth rates. And the findings should be interpreted cautiously, mainly because the size of the study is much, much smaller. So in conclusion, this study does indicate that in the case of threatened miscarriage, use of progesterone may increase the incidence of live birth rates and reduce the rate of miscarriage. So it's challenging and many, you know, there'll be people who will uh, swear by using progesterone and be very certain that progesterone does improve chances of, of pregnancy. And I think it's, a, it's been there for the last 50, 60 years that we advocate progesterone. And then we went through a phase of believing that they, they, there isn't much data to suggest that progesterone um, lowers the chance of miscarriage. But I think that the study does indicate that if you see somebody with a threatened miscarriage, addition of progesterone, oral or vaginal, may marginally reduce the rate of that miscarriage. Whether or not that salvages miscarriage, that's something which we don't know. Anyway, that's a short topic. Thank you very much. And if you like the talk and if you want to share this, and uh, please do. And see you next time.